I'm Monique Saltani. I'm a wine expert, a journalist, and I'm thirsty for life. This is Wino TV. Trinch, yeah. Trinch, what does that mean? It just means clink. 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 <laughs> oh, I almost drank the mic. <laughs> it's happened before. Where culture and agriculture come together. We are sitting down for Wine Tasting 101. I've got Bo here with me. We are at Flatiron Wine and Spirits. We're in downtown San Francisco. We're gonna talk about all kinds of stuff today because you're the man for wine education. <laughs> but um, why should someone order a wine by the glass? Because it allows people to try new things and experience new things without committing to getting a full bottle of wine. So if we have, you know, 4,000 different bottles of wine in there, people walk around and go, this is a lot of wine. I've never seen a lot of this, these different wines. What do they taste like? Well, they can come in here to the wine bar and they can see 20 or so selections that kind of you know, mimic on a micro scale what we have in the shop and taste different things. And you don't have to commit to something, uh, to a full bottle of something. You can just say, you know, what does that wine taste like? Oh, let's try that orange wine and see what it tastes like. And then I can say, and we have 30 more like that in the shop. We can show you around and you can uh, figure out what you might need for your dinner, for your party, et cetera, et cetera. So someone looks at a wine by the glass list and they're a little bit overwhelmed because they see all these wines and nowadays those psalms are putting on all kinds of grapes that nobody's ever heard of everybody's confused we don't know what to do we just look at the price and the things that we know how to say what are some advice for people that are, are new wine drinkers but they do want to venture out of their comfort zone and try something a little different sure well i mean the biggest advice i think would be to trust the uh the sommelier or the uh the person that's that, that's helping you that's serving you whether it's here at, 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 our, at our shop or in our wine bar or at any restaurant um you know there's a there's a there's a high uh, level of quality and of um, training out there for these people now, and they're able to, to kind of guide you through. I think that's the best way to start is to just tell somebody really, and don't you don't need to, to, to feel you know embarrassed or anything about it. Just say, hey, I don't know a ton about wine, but this is what I think I like. What would you recommend? A good wine list by the glass should have stuff that people are familiar with and comfortable with, and then some kind of you know, out there things that people maybe are less familiar with so that they can say, oh, I know that Chardonnay or that Cabernet. Um, and then what is, you know, what is this, you know, this kind of weird rosé that I've never heard of? Or what is this um, Nero, Norello Mascalese or Nebbiolo? You know, they, they can see different things on there, but they can see a few things that they're familiar with. And one of the things, Bo, that I love about uh, ordering by the glass is sometimes when it comes to food, uh, you have a bunch of different items of food and not every glass is going to uh, pair, every wine is going to pair with that food. And you guys do offer some food here at Flatiron. The folks over at the Palace Hotel, because that's where we are here in downtown San Francisco, right near the Palace Hotel, they actually have food that I believe the chef is going to bring some in for us right now. You put those truffle fries right here. Can you pair truffle fries with one of these wines on our table? I can pair it with several of the wines on the table. But really? Might, let's start with the one that's in our glass okay. right here. Because I think this is a, a really fun pairing. I mean, now truffle is obviously a pretty poignant uh, aromatic um, component to any dish, but what you're gonna usually compare that with, and in a lot of cases, is something that's also got some interesting aromatic qualities, and then you can have french fries, which are, you know, they're fried, so they're, they're bit, the best. Yeah, and they're awesome. <laughs> they're a little fat, and this, they, they make this, this this lovely little kind of béarnaise sauce here that's delicious. Um, so you want something with a little bit of acidity, too, to cut through the, the, the fat of the dish, too, and the, and the cheese on it. So what we have right here, is a, uh, what is called an orange wine. This is a skin contact white wine. It's made by the, uh, the winemaker is Kos. They're in Sicily, southern Sicily, in the, the Cerasuelo di Vittoria, um, uh, DOC down there. And by orange wine, what we mean is they take a white grape, in this case, a uh, Catarato, and they're going to let it sit on its skins um, as opposed to pressing it away from the skins right away like most white wines are, so you get more color and you get a little bit more texture to the wine. It's a category that's kind of caught on with a lot of people that maybe don't want to just drink a light crisp white wine, they don't want a red wine, and they have something to eat that they're not sure which way to go. Um, and it's also just kind of a, a new and different experience, so people are getting really into them. And so we have this one, the, again, it's the Coast, uh, uh, it's called Rami. Um, it's also interesting about this wine is that they make it in M4, so these giant old clay um, containers, the kind of way that it would have made wine back in the Roman times, too. Wow, and I love that you said a wine that I actually know how to pronounce, the grape, uh, Catarato. Yes, yeah, see, I've been to Sicily. So an orange wine, and here in San Francisco, we like to think of this as the giant's wine, and it's baseball season right now. Wow, so now should I just eat a fry and pair it, just like for the perfect pairing? Go for it. I always wonder about this. When you're doing a food and wine pairing, do you take the wine and then the food, or the food and then the wine? That's a good question. I think Thanks. often the wine comes first is what normally happens. So I will taste the wine first, usually, um, and, then, and then go for the food. However, you know, 
if food is there first and I'm hungry, I'm going to start eating the food, to be honest. So, there you go. But, I, but usually you, you try the wine. You can smell the wine all by itself kind of, and get a sense of what's going on with the wine first. And then the food comes and you start to eat the meal and enjoy the wine with the food, which is what wine really is supposed to be. It's supposed to be enjoyed with food. It's part of the, the, the meal, part of the, the, the experience. And which wine would you pair with a burger? I mean, red wines go best with burgers. Um, there's a few different options here. Classic one would be, you know, a Napa Valley Cabernet. This we have by the glass. This is, um, it, it's classic in a sense. It's from Napa Valley. It's Cabernet Sauvignon, something that in this area, obviously, people are very familiar with. The category is one of our top sellers. But this is not something that's super well known. You're not going to see it very often. Smaller production. It's actually from Young Inglewood. So uh, the Young family purchased an old estate on Inglewood in St. Helena and started making uh, wine again, basically, or, or kind of rejuvenated the property, built a new winery, etc. So uh, some very small production, not very well known, but super high quality. A lot of times you don't want to have to have a big, robust Cabernet. It's you know it's been pretty warm out. Even even here in San Francisco, it's been yeah. warmer than usual. Uh, Depends on what neighborhood you live in, Bo. Sorry, exactly. I've been wearing my winter parka all year long. <laughs> but uh, a wine like uh, Gamay is a great summer red. It goes great with burgers. You can drink it by itself, too. You can serve it like this, a little bit chilled. Um, it's, you know, it's probably most famous, the grape Gamay, as being the grape of, of Beaujolais, um, which a lot of people associate with really light, easy drinking wines, which is true. There's Cru Beaujolais, which are step-up wines there, which are actually excellent, excellent food pairing wines for all kinds of grilled meats and any kind of any kind of barbecue, any kind of summer food that you're, you're talking about, they go great. People see wines by the glass on the list. They wonder um, two things. So this is like the hard hitting questions here, Bo. They wonder, one, is it more marked up than if you buy a bottle? Like, is it more expensive to buy four glasses by the glass or one bottle, or is it the same? And then the other is freshness. So how do they know they're getting a wine by the glass is just as fresh as maybe getting the bottle? The simple answer to your first question is yes. Of course, wines by the glass are going to be marked up more because um, any wine bar, any restaurant is going to want to make sure that they can cover the cost of leftover wine, which kind of answers your second question, which is, what happens on day two or day three when the wine starts to fade? Well, if you're a good wine bar, a good restaurant, that's it. You toss the bottle. Whatever's left, you're not going to The use. staff drinks it. <laughs> no, or, I'm kidding. No, that might be true, too. Or somebody drinks somebody it. Somebody drinks it. <laughs> not, you, that, that, not that I ever worked in restaurants or anything. <laughs> but you don't serve it. You know, at a certain point, you're like, it's not ready to serve. Now, there are things you can do to make wines by the glass last a little, lo little longer. We keep everything, even the reds, you know, at the end of the night, we'll put in a wine fridge or in a cooler. Um, that helps them last a little longer. We also have, you know, for certain things... Uh, there's not some new technology out there that can help wines last longer. We've probably heard of Corvin, um, which we use sometimes to pour high-end wines here. Uh, there's also this, which is a new system for champagne, specifically called Perlage. Uh -huh. So this uh, contraption, essentially, allows you, it keeps the bottle inside of it. It keeps the, the bottle fresh. It add, you, can, you top it off with gas, and so the champagne lasts opened uh, and stays fresh for a week, two weeks sometimes. So wow. and that's great because then you can pour something like Dom Perignon, which we do here at the bar. We can pour a four ounce pour of Dom Perignon and not worry that, you know, I'm going to end up with half of a bottle of Dom that's, you know, that I can't serve anymore. And then, you know, you lose that, that wine. So it's a, it's a great way to offer people, you know, a, a little, I guess, you know, what you, the affordable luxury of like a little glass of Dom Perignon um, or something else that we pour from the Corvin as well. So, but in general, you know, we busy wine bars should be going through their bottles of wine, you know, every couple of days, of, uh, you know, if not, you know, more bottles open and, and gone, you know, within a few hours in lots of cases. So, yeah, I mean, if, you know, I think as a general um, piece of advice, if you walk into a, a, you know, a warm, dusty bar somewhere and you see some red wine sitting on the shelf, you know, maybe, maybe have a beer. <laughs> I don't know. But... This is a true point. I actually started ordering beer a lot more, even though, though I am the like wino in chief, because I had a few more than one occasions at a dusty old place, and you see it out in the sun, and you're just like, you know, I'm good. Like I either, and you know, you can't finish a whole bottle or whatever. So you get a beer and you have a good time. Talk to me a little bit about wine education, what you all do here, and why it's so important to you. Yeah, wine education. I mean, that's 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 a, a key part of our business, really, and it's what we also love and enjoy, and it's fun for us. So, um, you know, we have a big shop. We have you know thousands and thousands of different selections of wine. So. How do we help people navigate that and do it in a fun way? Well, this tasting room wine bar is one way that we do that. We offer, again, a constantly rotating selection of wines by the glass that's going to kind of mimic in a small level what we have. So, you know, a certain amount of American wines, a certain amount of French wines, Italian wines, some very uh, classic 
you know, well-known varieties, some really out there varieties, that sort of thing. We also do tastings in here all the time. So we'll have winemakers come in, both local people, you know, coming up, coming down from Sonoma, Napa, or up from Central Coast, and people from France, uh, Italy, Spain, all over the world, Germany, you know, um, coming in uh, when they're in town, and they'll they'll come in here for a couple hours, uh, you know, usually five to sevens on weekdays, and they'll stand at this table and they'll pour wines for people and talk about them. And, and the best way to learn about wine is to taste it while you're learning about it from the person that actually made the wine. So that's something that we love to do. We also, we have a downstairs uh, tasting room that we use for, for seminars, classes, kind of more focused tastings. We could yeah. do like wine one-on-one with you once a week and we, it would never get old because you have so much great information, so much fantastic wine. Uh, Bo, do you have a fun cheers or a toast, anything that you guys say around here that you like to close off well, with? You know, it's, that's, a, that's a great question. Actually, you know, this, is a, this wine that we have here, we pour by the glass Cabernet Franc from Bourgogne called Trinch. Trinch is what they say in France. Oh, trinch. I thought they all, they said, um, well, they, they, say, they say all kinds of yeah. stuff. Chin, chin. They say, we say trinch. Trinch, yeah. Trinch, what does that mean? It just means clink. 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 <laughs> oh, I almost drank the mic. <laughs> it's happened before.